Silver is an indispensable metal. Next to oil, silver is the most widely used commodity ever, and it has more than 10,000 uses. As technology progresses and expands, silver's usefulness will explode even further. Its unique characteristics are unlike any other commodity in the world. It is the most reflective of all metals. It is the greatest conductor of both heat and electricity. It strongly resists corrosion. It is the second most malleable and ductile metal next to gold. It has recently been discovered to be a very effective antimicrobial and bacterial metal. It's used in batteries, bearings, brazing, soldering, catalysts, clothes, coins, electrical components, electronics, electroplating, photography, medical applications, jewelry, silverware, mirrors, coatings, solar energy, and water purification. Silver is generally used in such small quantities and its unique characteristics make it irreplaceable. This is what makes its price inelastic. All commodities have a self-correcting price mechanism except for silver. If a commodity's price rises too high, demand drops off as people seek substitutes or supply rises to meet the demand, thus lowering the price. This mechanism does not exist for silver. Silver is typically used in very small quantities and high-tech components, and there is no substitute for it. So a manufacturer or customer will have to absorb any price increase. Silver is now starting to be used in clothing to reduce odors caused by bacteria. What is remarkable about it is that by weight, silver represents only one forty thousandth of the total of inputs on that shirt. When used in such tiny quantities, silver's price is almost irrelevant. Over 20 million tons of polyester sportswear produced every year, the textile industry consumes 1,200 tons of silver annually. That's 38 million ounces. Let's say, for example, the average computer contains one-tenth of an ounce of silver. That would mean that there is about $3 of silver in the computer. Now let's assume the computer in question costs $1,500. If silver were to go to $1,000 an ounce, the same silver in that computer would be $100. Do you think Apple Computer is going to throw its arms up in the air and cry that they can no longer sell computers because silver is too expensive? No, they will raise the price of the computer and probably advertise that it has the most silver in it. Do you think the average consumer is going to say, I would buy a computer at 1500 but at 1600 no way. No, they'll find a way to get the extra $100 so they can read the latest online news about Miley Cyrus. It's not just consumer products that are at risk. It's the companies, the industries, the nations that are at risk. Apple has a market cap of $400 billion. If a strategic commodity like silver starts having shortages, their billion-dollar empire is endangered. Companies will go into panic buying securing any amount of physical silver they can because their entire value-added business is dependent upon it. They will not be buying SLV or certificates of deposits. Only the real physical silver will suffice. They will whip out their huge checkbook and stock up. Now you can see why rising prices actually increase demand. And it's not just the computer industry that's relying upon silver. It's the multi-billion dollar industries like energy, medical, and the military. <laughs> and soon the banking industry as their debt money system collapse. This directly affects national destinies. Governments held approximately 10 billion ounces of silver in 1950 and have been supplying that physical stock steadily into the open market for years. Today there is no more surplus left to sell. The nations that manage their resources the best will win the future. Unlike industrial demand, monetary demand has no limits. The monetary demand will eventually send silver to the moon. How will quadrillions of fiat paper money flow into less than a billion ounces of silver? It's impossible. Paper is poverty. It is the ghost of money and not money itself. Thomas Jefferson. I have seen bright and intelligent men fail to understand that the electronic digits in their computer screens are not real money. They always do get it when you hold an ounce of gold or a hundred ounce bar of silver. It's a frightening aspect of our society that we've become so detached from real money that most of us cannot even comprehend real money. Do yourself a favor this week and go to your local coin shop and just touch an ounce of gold or a big fat shiny bar of silver. Then look at that wad of paper in your wallet or worse the digits in your bank account and tell me honestly where would you rather invest your future?